But Tom, will you always wear a prayer with it? Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we, Father, do thank you that, God, we have a story this morning. God, help us to tell it. Help us to share it so that others might know about Jesus. Yes. Bless, Father, this morning in the service. I pray, Father, you will bless those that maybe have a song. God bless that song that it lifts you up. Bless our pastor as he preaches that precious word this morning. And I pray, Father, that that word might touch my heart, might touch every heart this morning. Bless, Father, may we worship you in spirit and truth. We love you and thank you for all you do for us. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day. Because thou hast been faithful in a very little, 
Have thou authority over ten cities? And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said, Likewise to him be thou also over five cities. Verse 20 says, And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee, because thou art a sure man, thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thy own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was a sure man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore, when gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required my own with usury. That's like interest. Yeah. Verse 24, and he said unto them that stood by, take him the pound and give it to him that hath ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. For I say unto you that unto every one that hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. But those, my enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring them hither and slay them before me. Oftentimes we might ask somebody, and we might ask something simple. We see somebody say, what, what you been up to? What have you been up to? Now many of you could say, oh my. Many would say, Nothing. Nothing. Surely you've been something up to something, haven't you? Others might might give a long list. Oh, I worked a hard week. I did all this. I did that. You know, as I thought to myself, even in, in my, uh, it's hard to believe I retired from a job. And uh, you're thinking, yeah, Brother Red, what do you do all day? That's probably what you're thinking. I'm huh? sitting around doing nothing. And uh, I started listening. I don't know what I did. I know we had grandkids the first of the week. We had to take them to school. I had to take my truck in to get it worked on. Go back in to get it picked up. I, I also had to have a tooth pulled this week. Amen. And you know what? I experienced laughing gas. I've never had laughing gas. I'm going to tell you what. It don't make you laugh. And uh, I, 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 don't, I don't even know what it was. I don't think it did anything. And, uh, but the fact of the matter is, and I thought what else took place this week and all that, I could say many different things. And uh, You know, you've got a long list with what you went through and what you did this week. But as I was thinking about it, I believe that's a good answer. And I, I need to try to uh, get better at this answer. If you ask me, I, and you say, Brother Brett, what have you been doing? You know what I like to say, and this is the title of my message here, what are you up to? You know what I am? I'm waiting for the coming of Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm doing. Amen. That's what we ought to be doing. Yeah. It ought to be on our mind every day. Right. You'll find the, the early church in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 1, verse 7, it says... Uh, so that he come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know what the early church was doing? They were waiting for Jesus to return. Yeah. You say, what have you been doing? I'm waiting for Jesus to return. They were excited about that. They were looking forward to that. The Thessalonian church, we won't turn there, but in chapter 3, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 5, it says they were patient, waiting for Christ. What were they doing? What was the church doing? They were waiting for the return of the Lord. Amen. They were waiting for the kingdom of God. That's what they were doing. And so I thought about that as I dwelt on that a little bit this week. I, what's it mean to wait? What's it mean to wait? Now, uh, what it doesn't mean, doesn't mean just sit around and do nothing. That's right. The text that we just read here one went into a far country. One was coming to get his kingdom. And one is coming back. That's like my Lord. He's coming back. And you know what he told them to do? He said, occupy till I come. That's right. He said, occupy till I come. You know what that is? You know what, we, what word wait means? It also means work. Uh -huh. It means work. He said, occupy till I come. That means to carry on the business. The word occupy means to carry on the business. 
And so he said, I'm going away. I'm counting on you to carry on the business. And you want, as we read this parable here, it's, it's quite a parable. It's something we really don't want to preach on. We don't really want to hear about. I need to hear about this. It's something that says, it's a quite a responsibility. And God is very uh, serious about this matter. He gave all, he gave ten of them a pound each. He gave them all the same thing, didn't he? Yeah. And he said to them, here's a pound. Occupy until I come. And we know as we read there, he came back, and with the, of the ten, he's going down there. And he found one that had ten, and he had, he, 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 he made ten, and he, he, he made it grow, didn't he? Yeah. He did something. He occupied. He worked. And when he came back and he said, oh, you made ten, he said, you know what he said? Well done. <coughs> That's what, isn't that a desire that God would say to you and I, well done? The one that had a pound, one the other one, he only did five. But you know what God did? He said, well done. I'm confident if there one just had one and he just brought him another one, you know what God would have said? Well done. That's right. But we find here, what does it mean to wait? It means to work. And we find that this other one that came, and he came before him. And what did he do? And you know, God has given us something. I don't know what it is, but he gave us a responsibility. As a child of God, being part of the kingdom of God, and we're waiting for the kingdom of God, God has given you and I a responsibility. We all got that. And you know what the one did? He took that responsibility and he put it in a napkin. And I thought, well, what did he do with that napkin? He must have probably just stuffed it in a drawer somewhere. And when his Lord, the Lord came back, he said, well, let me see what you've done. He finally pulled it out of the drawer for the first time. I was reading about that napkin, and many said that napkin was used in work to wipe the sweat off. Well, he didn't even use the napkin. He didn't work up a sweat. And uh, you think serving the Lord's easy. It's not. No, you're going to have to work up a sweat. It's something that's it, it's not easy to do. But we find that when we're waiting, and I, as I thought about this, is a serious matter. And what did he say to him? He took it away from him. And he gave it to another. The others, he rewarded them. He said, you've done well. To the one with ten, he said, you'll be a ruler over ten cities in the kingdom. The one with five said, you'll be ruler over five cities. You know, it tells us what we do is going to affect us for eternity. The book of uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 talks about our works. There's one thing that will follow you into heaven. It's your works. The Bible says your works will follow you. And the Bible says your works will be tested and tried with fire. And it will be burned. And, uh, and some will come out gold and silver. But some will be wood and hay and stubble. And it will be burned up. And the Bible says some will see a reward. I'm talking about God's people. And some will receive loss. We don't want to hear that kind of preaching. I'm going to heaven. What a day that's going to be. It's going to be a wonderful thing. But what an awful thing this one here said. He didn't say, well done. We find here, what does it mean to wait on the Lord? I asked you this morning, what are, what are you up to? Are you waiting for the kingdom of God? We ought to be waiting for it, and part of that waiting is working, praise the Lord. Well, turn over to Acts chapter 1. There's something else that this waiting entails. The, the, the disciples are again anxious. They're anxious to find out when Jesus is going to set up this kingdom. Verse 4 says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which would say, uh, He ye have heard of me. Verse 6 says, But when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, when wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? They're excited. When, when are you going to set the kingdom up? When is going to take place? Well, you find Jesus goes on. And he tells them again in verse 8. He says, wait. He says, ah, no one knows but the Father when the king is going to be set up. They're expecting it now. 
And you know what? You know what Jesus did? He said, "You'll receive some power." Until then, in a sense, until then, I'll give you something to get you through. Anybody need something to get through it? Yeah. Until Jesus comes, we need something, don't we? Right. And you find here, we find what did they do? What did they do during this time they were waiting? They went into the upper room, by the way. And in verse 13 it says, And they, when they were coming, they, they went up into the upper room. They were both, both Peter, James, and John, and so on. In verse 14 it says, These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brethren. Verse 5 it says, Peter stood up. He started to share with them. You know what the part of waiting is? It's not just work, it's worship. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Can you imagine what they had just gone through? They had just experienced. They just went through the death of Jesus. They went through the burial. And then they praised God. They went through the resurrection. Yeah. Think they got excited about that? They saw Jesus descending up. Woo, look at him going up to glory. He said he's going to prepare a place. And he said he's coming back. They got excited about that. And he said, so just wait. Just wait. They didn't know how long they were going to have to wait. And they waited. They waited there. They waited and waited. And what were they doing? While they were waiting, they were worshiping. Yeah. Did you know we have the same we have the same message today? The death, the burial, the resurrection. There's a hope for a lost and dying world. There was a day that I was headed for a devil's hell, but praise God, Jesus, he, he, he had victory over the grave, over death, over hell, praise God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10, it says the church is waiting for the return of the kingdom. And you know what it says? To deliver us from the wrath you ask the church at this moment, what are you doing? I'm waiting for the Lord. Yeah. Amen, that's what I'm doing. I'm waiting for the Lord. He's going to deliver us from the wrath to come. That ought to excite us. My. Praise the Lord. I don't know what we're going to have to go through in this life down here, but I praise God as a child of God. I'm not going to have to go through the wrath of God. Amen. That's right. He's delivering us from that. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Oh, I tell you what, we come to the house of God. You know what we do? They met on the upper room. They said, Jesus, He's here for us. He's going to take care of us. He said He's going to give us some power. He's going to see us through. Amen. That's how we are this morning. Amen. We're, we've got something that's sure. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. We have to be excited about it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. What are you up to, folks? What are you up to? Are you waiting for the kingdom of God? Are you waiting for the Lord? That means if you're waiting, it means you're working. That means if you're waiting, you're, you're worshiping. Isn't that right? Yeah. Oh, how we need to be waiting. We need to be worshiping. We need to be working. You know, uh, and you know, you get tired of me saying this verse, but I, that's one of my favorite verses. It says, don't forsake the assembly of yourself together. Isn't that what the Bible said? Amen. Don't forsake it. That means come together. Even when you have times, it seems like you had a rough morning, whatever, let's make an effort to come together. He deserves our worship, amen. And praise God, the Bible said, you know what it all says? And so much the more. Yes, yeah. amen. We're living a day that's less. Yeah. That's right. Aren't we? Yeah. Less church, less services, less this. Even great big churches, they only have one service. They get less. We're getting less. The Bible said more, more, more. As you see the day approaching. You've got to be blind not to see the days approaching. Yeah. What's it mean to wait? What are you up to? I'm waiting for the Lord. Amen. That means I'm working. It means I'm worshiping. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, there's something else that I believe we need to be doing as we wait. It's not just work. It's not just worship. It's watching. That's right. Yes. There's a, there's, a, there's a story of a man in Luke chapter 2. And this is an old man. In Luke chapter 2 verse 25 says, Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just in the Bible. Notice what it said. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. 
You know what he was waiting for? He was waiting for some confidence. He was waiting to know that the Savior was coming. Right. Yeah. You ask this old man, what you been doing? I'm waiting for the Lord. And it says, as you read on, the Holy Ghost was upon him, and he was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death. He won't die. He's an old man. And he said, before he had seen the Lord's Christ, you say, what are you doing? I'm waiting for the Lord. That's what he was doing. So what, what else are you doing? Well, you're doing other things, but you know what? His main focus, I'm waiting for the Lord. And it came by the Spirit under the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he up in his arms, he blessed God and said, I like this, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace. You know what he said? I'd like to die now. <laughs> Amen? I've been waiting for to see this. I've been waiting to see the hope of Israel, the hope of our world. And you've let me see him. And he said, let me go on my home now. Amen. I think the Lord took him. Amen. Mm. According to thy word. For my eyes have seen what? Thy salvation. You know what this old man had been doing in the temple all those few times? People said, what are you doing? Well, I'm waiting for our salvation. Folks say, good night. What a waste of your time. Why, why don't you do something more profitable with your life? Amen. You can make a lot of money. You can do this. Now, praise God, God can allow all those things. And you can still be waiting uh, for the return of the Lord. Be waiting for the kingdom. Be waiting for the Lord this morning. That was at his birth. I looked this. I was kind of interesting. I thought it was interesting. Look over in Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15, there's another man that was also waiting, but this wasn't at the birth, this was at his death. This man was named Joseph of Arimathea. Mark chapter 15, verse 43 says, And Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor, which also, notice what this man was doing. He was waiting for the kingdom of God. He came, and he went in boldly into Pilate, and he craved the body of Jesus. The other books in the, there also said he, he begged, would you please give me the body? And Pilate marveled, if he were already dead, and called unto him. The centurions asked him whether he had been dead a while. And when they knew it of the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. And he brought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in linen and laid him in the sepulcher which he had hewn out of a rock and rolled a stone into the door of the sepulcher. Boy, I tell you, I like that. You talk to this Joseph. You find he had much wealth. He has great honor. And said, what are you doing? I'm waiting for the kingdom of God. That's a pretty good response. He said, I'm waiting for the kingdom of God. Simeon was waiting, and he got to see the birth. But we find here, what a precious thing. We, you know what? Joseph got to experience the death of our Savior. We sing about it. The old rugged cross. Yeah. We try to visualize it. But you know what, Joseph? He was there. He experienced the death of our Savior. He saw the blood drip. He saw the suffering. He didn't realize at the time, but you know what? He couldn't get that out of his mind. We tried to visualize it, but he visualized it real. And he realized that blood was shed for me. Amen. What did he do? Joseph held that dead body. He took it to a tomb that the Bible says he hewed out himself and laid that body in there. Joseph, what are you doing? I'm waiting for the king to right. Seems pretty late. But you know what Joseph also experienced? Woo, glory! He laid in there, shut the tomb, three days later, praise God, the earth shook, amen, there's a risen Savior. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Joseph, what are you doing? What are you up to? I'm waiting for the kingdom of God. Amen. That's what I'm doing. Simeon, he was waiting at his birth. Joseph was waiting at his death. Amen. And you know what brings me to you and I today? You know what we're looking for? His return. Yeah. 
Anybody looking? Am I? We like to say it's good to say that here. Oh yeah, I'm looking. I, you know what? We are not looking too well, are we? Do we get up in the morning and say, Lord, is it today? We don't even think about it at the time. We don't think about it unless the earth shattering thing happens. Oh, I guess it could happen. I, we need to believe the Lord is going to return. Amen. He's coming back. Times are running out. Amen. We need to be watching. I want you to know that this is very important that we watch. In Luke chapter 12, verse 36, let me read this for you. What are you doing? Are you working? Are you worshiping? Are you watching? That's what you do when you're waiting, amen? No. Luke chapter 12, verse 36, it says, well, verse 35, let me start there. This is like, I mean, get ready. To let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. That's like, get ready. And ye yourself likewise unto men that wait for their Lord. Anybody waiting for the Lord? When he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, that they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find what? Watching. Watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them, and it shall come in the second watch, or if it should come in the second watch, or the third watch, and find them, so blessed are those servants. Verse 39 says, And this know that if the good man, oh, we need some good men and women, of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched. You know, we're, he's coming. It's, it's near. And we know it's in this watch. And you know what? We would be watching. And it says, And not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh in an hour when you think not. You know why we you know why we, we work for the Lord? You know really why we worship come to get strength. You know why we do that? You know why we're watching? So that we might have the strength and the power and the wisdom to warn a dying world. Yeah. That's what your life's all about. Now what's the purpose of life? It's to keep folks from going from a devil's hell. Amen. Death. The Lord didn't say you just say, boy, you can have a good time now and you take it easy and then you just go to heaven. No, he's very serious about this. He said, occupy. <clears throat> While you're waiting, we need to be laboring, we need to be worshiping, we need to be watching. You know, this morning, are we? What, if I ask you, how are you doing? I need this more than anybody. I'm not working like I should. I'm not worshiping like I should. I'm not watching like I should. I'm not witnessing like I should. You know, if uh, you use these type of illustrations all the time, if you saw your child out there and it was in the river and it's starting to drown, you'd say, well, I guess it'd be all right. No, you ain't going to do that. You're going to do all your power to get them out of there, to get them from sinking, to get life back in them. But there's something worse. You know, our children, unless they come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, they're in that river and they're sinking. That's right. You know what we've got to do? We've got to do all in our power. All that we can. The devil wants them. It's a battle. Mm -hmm. yes. And he's doing a very good job. He knows how to do it. And it's licking. I tell you, we as God's people, amen. He said, occupy. Take over. Amen. Praise God. Until I come back. There, uh, it's important to warn. Amen. You know, we, we live in a world that people are being sued over everything. Mm. I was reading about, uh, just for example, you would think a lot of things that are common sense aren't. <laughs> Manufacturers are growing increasingly wary of being sued when their products are misused. For example, the Batman outfit. I don't know if you ever had a Batman outfit. You can get a Batman a mask, a Batman cape, 
I mean, that's kind of neat, isn't it? I think we got one at the house. I, I'm going to look at it, but here's what it says. It says, uh, here's what they had to do. They had to put a warning on it. Parents, please exercise caution for play only. Mask and cape are not protected. They won't protect you from nothing. And by the way, uh, uh, the cape does not enable a user to fly. Now, doesn't that sound kind of silly? Sounds kind of silly. You think they'd be common sense. As I was thinking about that, I, I know about where I used to work. We make these great big lifts and great big runways, and there are thousands and thousands of pound runways. And they are a great big semi on top of those lifts, and they're coming down. And a great big runway, again, that's, that's thousands of pounds. You know, wouldn't you be foolish to stand there and put your foot under it like this? Who's going to do that? You'd think it'd be common sense, wouldn't you? Yeah. But you know what we found we have to do? And I know all about it. You've got to put it in the instructions. Don't put your foot under there. You've got to put a tag there. Don't put your foot under there. And I thought, good night! And you know, if someone don't put that tag on there, the installer, and someone puts their foot under there, we're in trouble. Mm -hmm. And again, I thought to myself, well, that's just common sense. You know what I thought? It's common sense this morning. You got sin. Sin will not enter heaven. It sin will head, send you to a devil's hell. And I tell you what, this morning, if you don't do something about that sin, you're foolish. Yeah, that man. And you know what I think? Well, I was thinking, well, they, they understand. No, they don't. You know, we, it's our responsibility to warn. Yeah. We've got to warn our neighbors. We've got to warn our grandkids. We've got to warn them. I mean, I, I don't know how. I don't know what. But I tell you what. I want to tell them. I don't want them to go down. Yeah. I want them to go up. Amen. And you know how it's going to help us? I'll ask you again. What are you up to? What, what are you up to this week? Are you waiting? For the Lord. Yes. We need to be waiting for Him. It ought to be on our mind. Help us, Lord. I tell you, I'm ashamed. I should time and time again, I'm ashamed in my own life. Amen. I, I know I should have done something, I didn't do it, and I can look back and say, Boy, I don't know. I'll get to glory one day. And, now, I know I'm heading to heaven. But there might be that one and say, Why did you say something to me? I should have said something. I don't know what the thing God gave you, but God gave us responsibility. We all got one as a child of God. I'm not talking about lost folks. I'm talking about saved folks. God has given you a responsibility. And he says, occupy until I come. I don't know he's coming back, folks. But I tell you what, the Bible says to redeem the time. Time's running out. True. Sure. Help us get focused. We say, what's wrong with our nation? What's wrong with our world? You know what it is? It's the church. It's me. It's us. Help us, Lord, this morning that we might do and be what you want us to be. Let's all stand. Father, we thank you. Lord, you're so good. Lord, we don't deserve your presence. Lord, when I when I went to this message, Lord, it hits me hard. It, we can easily say, oh yeah, I love the Lord. We can easily say, I'm saved. The Lord's a serious man. You gave us a parable, and one day you're coming back, and you, you're going to tell us accountable for what you've given us. Lord, help us. Lord, I can't change the past, but I can do something about today, about tomorrow. I can't do it on my own, Lord. We need your help. We need your strength. Father, there's people that are dying, going to devil's hell. Lord, we want to do something about that. We've got family members. Might even be close. Might be a husband, a wife. Might be a son, a daughter, a parent. But Lord, where's our burden this morning? Help us, Lord, to do our waiting as we're waiting for the return of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Have your way in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's turn to page 306.
306. Have I no way, Lord? Have I no way? Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Have I no way, Lord? Have I no way? Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just